Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming and uh, this is the update launch video for my real solar system expansion. Uh, in point 9.0 I felt there weren't enough planets or dwarf planets or whatever in the solar system because we only had some dozen or so and so I decided to add some more and um, now that KSP updated that pack no longer works that was called the RSS expansion pack for real solar system in KSP but um, I now have updated it for 1.0, and it com but I it contains completely different uh, objects now. So it's for real solar system in Kerbal Space Program, and I have decided to give it a real name this time. It's going to be Solar System Expanded. That's the name of the pack. So let's take a look at what we have. So here's Earth. That's just stock real solar system, but let's zoom out so we can see. Now I gotta do some disclaimers before I actually show you. First of all, installing this mod expansion will uh, use more memory from your Kerbal Space Program program. And that's just going to happen no matter how you add uh, an object. These are all 4K textures for the height map, normals, and color. And um, if you're having issues, you can try to get a 64-bit installation, which will work on Linux or you can try running in OpenGL mode, which is very easy. Just look up a guide online for OpenGL mode. So, another disclaimer is that your game will load more slowly than it would with normal RSS because I was unable to get DDS textures working for color maps. The others appear to be working. So that means that the PNG color maps are going to be uh, loading longer than the DDS. So you're going to have slower load times, more memory used, which may or may not matter. And then another thing is that some of the irregular bodies, which is almost everything in this mod right now, uh, stuff like lumpy, not round, uh, some of them are going to have either a mohole type structure, a pole of the north and south poles, or a uh, pillar like you can see on Dimos right now. And that's just due to higher height uh, deformity levels. And uh, it was either having that pillar and having good looking uh, moons, or it was having really overly round objects that shouldn't be that round because of how small they are. But uh, that being said, uh, the installation details will be in the description. I'll be putting it on Kerbal stuff. It might be on CCAN. And uh, again, requires Real Solar System by Nathan Kell, which is probably my favorite KSP mod ever. It's amazing. This is all you that you see here is in that mod right now. So let's start with Pluto. That's the original reason I made uh, the original mod. So as you can see, we have two moons here. The actual Pluto has five. Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, Styx, and Charon. Charon being the big one. And here we have Charon. But, um, I, I, well, I wanted to add Charon because that's an important one. It's huge. It's bigger than Ceres. And then I added Styx, which is the smallest one. And then I kind of thought that I don't want to add in the rest of them because we don't have pictures of them yet. And we don't, we'll know more about them in less than a month with New Horizons. And, well, scratch that. I mean, they're going to be releasing information because New Horizons has to transmit it back uh, over the next couple months. So I'm not going to add in the other moons of Pluto until we have that information. So I wanted to do Charon because it's big, and then Styx because it's small and irregular. The other three right now will be very similar to Styx, although some of them are bigger. But those are going to stay not in the mod until New Horizons fly by. So let's take a look at Charon. Uh, this looks exactly the same as it did in the old pack. Uh, everything here uses space engine textures. So we have description. Charon is the largest of Pluto's moons and is mutually gravitationally locked with it. So each keeps the same face towards the other. So then we have parameters with its radius. Uh, pretty low surface gravity. And then sticks. Here we have it. I think it came out very well, and it actually lacks the mohole or pillar thing that I was afraid of that did come out on some of Neptune's moons. But we have some nice craters here. I think it looks pretty good. Seven kilometer radius. Sticks is the smallest moon of Pluto. Nobody's ever seen what it looks like, but expect pictures from New Horizons soon. So that's the Pluto system for now, and Sticks would have some great views if you could get on the right side. But um, let's move on. So originally, I was going to add tons of uh, the Uranian moons, the planet Uranus. And the first ones went really well. Uh, Cordelia and Desdemona were the ones I added. Those are very close together orbiting moons. There's like five or six, maybe more, I can't remember. But there's a bunch of moons orbiting very closely to uh, Uranus with uh, very closely to each other, and they actually have a chance of impacting 
it's it's low, but it's much higher than most other moons. And those came out great. They looked awesome. They looked really well. They looked really good, and there were great views of um, the planet from there. But Uranus's major moons are Oberon, Umbriel, Ariel, and Titania, as well as Miranda. And I really wanted to have those in there if I'm going to add anything to that planet. And none of them worked. All of the space engine textures were completely and utterly broken. In Space Engine, they're very blurry, but in uh, when you export them, they're completely wrong. They're I don't even know what they are. It's some sort of white and black texture. It's it's weird. They didn't work at all. So I called off the Uranus moons, and I decided to do Neptune instead. Neptune has either 13 or 14 moons, and uh, I have not added them all yet, but they will be added. I just wanted to get a release out um, so people could use this in 1.0. So, uh... As you can see, we zoom in on Neptune, take a look at these moons. So, these are some real life stuff, So, but we're going to start closer up. Uh, oh, this is kind of funny. This is Triton, this is in the main mod. Actually, let's just let's go to this. So, I launched this uh, Bigelow module to a lunar orbit on the save, then I started modifying the planet pack, and uh, this thing got sent around the solar system. So, halfway through, I checked it, and it was orbiting Iapetus at Saturn. And then in the end, it's ordering, or orbiting Triton. So this is very cheaty. I'm going to have to remove this save because this is completely stupid that this got sent out here. But it's kind of funny. You can see Triton down there. There's Neptune. Um, this only had enough fuel to go. Eh, it probably could have gone to Mars, but not um, braked in it with the amount of fuel I had. Anyway, that's not the point. Triton is... Um, oh, actually, there is a point to that. Uh, if you have a save, this will break it your uh, real solar system save, your ships will get moved around. So, let's start with the first moon, Proteus. There are actually five or six more orbiting closer than this, including one without a name yet, because it was just discovered in 2013, which is pretty cool. But, we are not, I don't have those yet. Let's take a look at Proteus. Proteus is rather round. Um, it's, it is an irregular moon, though, so we have these craters. And uh, I think the texture came out pretty well. We do have this pillar on top. I'm sorry about that. I don't know how to fix it. If you know, please let me know. So uh, this is pretty big. It's actually the second largest moon of Neptune after Triton. But uh, let's move on. Here's Triton. This is it. I did not create this. This is in uh, the normal RSS. Looks very nice. But this is the biggest moon of Neptune. Let's move on. Nereid. Uh, Nereid is rather round. Uh, it's also quite big. I believe it's the third largest moon, although I could be wrong. And uh, it has a rather eccentric orbit, so let's take a look at Nereid. So here's Nereid. Look at that. The very, very eccentric, very elliptical, and rather inclined. So um, we're going to be going to the next moon now. So where is Halimede? Halimede is an outer moon recently discovered, and it orbits retrograde due to this massive, massive inclination and eccentricity. It's very, very far from Neptune, and uh, here it is. It's, we don't actually have any real pictures of this, so these are all just space engines interpretation on this. Uh, radius of 31 kilometers, so actually not that small when you consider that Deimos has a radius of approximately 6.2 kilometers, and everyone considers that to be a perfectly fine moon. And you got these things that are way bigger than that, and no one even knows what they are, so it's kind of interesting. It, it should be very fun to send missions out here, because just just take a look at where this thing is located. And it, I think Halimede orbits Neptune in, I, I believe it was about a year, but I could, that might be narrated, I might be wrong. Actually, do we have the stats here? No, we do not. Okay. So there's Halimede. Uh, let's go to... Where is it? Laomedia. Laomedia is pretty similar to Halimede. Um, I made the texture more irregular. I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. But this, you can see an example of a mohole right here. Uh, but I think it looks pretty cool. There's this big crater on the back. Took a huge chunk of it. So uh, this moon is, again, not actually that small. Radius 21 kilometers. So that's, if this was an asteroid, it'd be a, real, a pretty big asteroid. So now we have uh, Sao. Sao is another one of these outer moons um, that nobody really knows about. Looks pretty similar color to Halimede. Uh, we have these craters here, and it's a little bit irregular. And we're looking at a 22 kilometer radius. So now we're going to be looking at Samanthe and Naso. 
Uh, both of these are extremely inclined, extremely eccentric orbits around Neptune, and extremely distant. Their semi-major axis is measured in gigameters. Well, so are these, but these ones are especially great because these two are both orbiting at a similar distance with the periapsis and apoapsis to Neptune as Mercury orbits the Sun. That's how big these orbits are. So let's take a look at Samanthe. So here we have it. Uh, I think this one came out pretty nicely. There is a slight mo hole, but it's not that bad. Some craters on the bottom. And we have a 19 kilometer radius. And then we move on to Neso. Neso, I think, came out really nicely. Very lumpy, except this. Uh, Deimos has one of these. This one's actually pretty bad, this spike. Of course, um, if you look at it from the bottom, you won't see that spike. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much what we have right now. So what I'm hoping to do in the future plan, uh, future for this mod is some more asteroids in the asteroid belt. So we're looking at Ceres, Vesta, maybe Pallas, um, Lutetia is a decent one. I'll probably be adding a comet. Um, I don't know which one yet. That was actually my original test object, but I didn't finish that. I will be adding all of the moons of Neptune. So there are a bunch of inner ones that I haven't done yet. I've done all of the outer ones, including... a. Uh, all, most of these outer ones were discovered in 2003, so they're pretty recent. And there's one inner one from 2013, so that's pretty cool. Again, Pluto will be getting the rest of its moons after New Horizons flies by. Uh, if I can ever find decent textures that aren't that are okay resolution, I'll be adding Uranus's moons. But otherwise, it might end up alone. Saturn, uh, not really going to touch that right now. The main real solar system mod added plenty. Jupiter could use some more moons, so I might do that. And then I want to add Trojan. Trojan asteroids. So if you don't know what those are, it's asteroids that orbit the Lagrange points uh, 60 degrees in front of and behind planets. Uh, Jupiter has enough of them to equal the mass of the asteroid belt. So if you thought the asteroid belt was special because it had all these asteroids, well, I'm sorry, there's just as many right here in Jupiter's orbit. And then Neptune, they haven't discovered them all yet, but they're, they, it, it has lots of them too, and they're big. They're really big. They're 180 kilometer diameter is one of them. Actually, quite a few are similar to that size. Actually, uh, Mars has a few of those, seven, I believe. Earth has one very small one, and Saturn has none. So, if I can figure out how to add Trojan asteroids, I will definitely do that, because that seems to be pretty cool. And then, of course, I'll be adding stuff like the rest of the TNOs, Eris, Orcus, Hamea, Makimake. All that stuff that was in the old mod will come back, eventually. The reason I didn't finish all Neptune's moons is I kind of wanted to get a release out, and uh, it's definitely playable right now. So I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this, and I really hope that you install this mod and show me your missions. If you do something with one of these moons with this mod, do not hesitate to uh, message me your uh, mission album or video or whatever. I would love to see someone using this mod, and that would, yeah, that'd be great, because I don't have time to visit all these moons. And, uh, like, visiting NASO, that'd be very hard. It orbits in 26 years, so... You have to have some strategy to do that. I hope someone does that, and if you're installing the mod, yeah, post the albums. That'd be great. Anyway, uh, expect updates very soon with more stuff, and uh, hope you enjoyed this. Installation instructions will be in the description. Thank you for watching.